Hi, my name's Julia, and I've been sewing since I was nine years old. That's been a long time. And uh, I really like sewing. I'm using my mom's machine. She bought it two or three years before I was born. That was 54 years ago. So um, I've used it, and I love it. And it's not very fancy, but it works. I uh, am what you would call the make-do queen. Make-do, use it up, wear it out. And uh, so I am doing some alterations for a neighbor. She asked me to hem some jeans for her. And uh, I haven't done that very often. I've done it some. But I always have problems whenever I get to the side seams where there are nine layers of very thick fabric. So what I have to do is make sure that all my gauges on here are set properly. The first thing I want to do is make sure that I have the right size needle. You need a size 16 needle or heavyweight needle for your machine. Without that, you'll have skipped stitches and maybe a tangled mess underneath. You have to make sure that on the back side, uh, your fabric dial is set for the heaviest fabric. You have to make sure that your stitching, I'm going to do top stitching. So I've set my gauge to six here. This is in the forward position and my drop feed is engaged um, and I'm, I'm not doing any kind of a zigzag I'm doing straight stitch. The last thing I want to check is the tension. I want to make sure that there's even tension between the bottom stitching and the top stitching which means that no loops should be showing either on the underside at the point where the you know they meet or on the top side. Now um, you know, I've, I've adjusted that. You need to test it on a piece of similar fabric. This is the same weight. So I went through and can you get a close up of that, Phoebe? Okay. And I made sure that the top t uh, stitching tension is even with the bottom. And I had to adjust the top a little bit so that it would pull it up um, and make nice even stitches. Okay, now, a friend of mine had told me, well, I had seen this little gadget called a genomajig, and I thought, I need one of those things. And a friend of mine told me, oh, you don't need one of those. All you do is roll up some denim. So I had some red denim, and I rolled it up, and I used that um, on my machine. Now, you'll see in just a minute what I'm talking about, but... Uh, the problem that I had was I, I had a hard time keeping it rolled and I also kept stitching into it as I was doing it and you'll know what I mean in a minute. So let me show you how I am. Um, I've already started stitching here and I've come up on the first one. Uh, I had used the fabric. Let me get my pen out of the way there. We don't want to run over pins. It breaks needles. Bends the pins. Okay. My goal is I'm setting up on top of nine layers of denim fabric right now. When I come down, what will happen is, if I don't put anything in the way, it will make very small stitches. It might even skip a stitch, and it wants to veer. Now, I can't do a lot about the veering except to hold the fabric, but I can do something um, about the skip stitches or the too small of a stitch. So what I had done in the past, was I used the denim fabric which is the same length I need to take a couple more stitches here and I'm doing it by hand I'm turning the flywheel by hand coming up um, too far back okay now here's what you need to remember always anytime you lift the presser foot anytime you lift the presser foot your needle needs to be down inside the fabric if you've been stitching the needle needs to stay down inside the fabric. Otherwise, it will shift and then your stitching will be, un, you know, it'll be crooked. So I'm going to lift the presser foot. My goal is to keep this presser foot at a level uh, parallel to the surface of my sewing machine. So rather than it coming down like this on a hill. So I'm going to roll up this fabric, stick it under here like this. Now, the problem that I had whenever I did that was I would take my stitches forward. See, that keeps it uh, level. 
it keeps the stitching level. Now see it wants to veer, so I have to kind of pull it like this. Ah, uh, okay. The problem that I have is it wants to catch onto this fabric and then I have to cut it out and start over again with my stitching. And I was thinking, okay, I don't have time to run out to the store and buy a thingamajig or order one online. I mean a genamajig, order one online. And so what I, I thought, what do I have here at home that I can use? And I thought, what would be something that would be impervious to stitching and tall enough? Well, the first thing that came to mind was a popsicle stick. I have a whole bunch of these things because I have kids. Okay, so what I did was I taped together two popsicle sticks and they are just the right thickness. So what you do is you lay this under here like this. Keeps that level, keeps the presser foot level. Now I'm going to take my stitches. Now the problem I have with my machine is as I'm going through the thicknesses of the fabric this wants to bump up, so I have to take a stitch, push that down, or else it'll go up to too tight, too, uh, too many stitches per inch. Take a stitch, I have to move this forward a little bit so it doesn't, the needle doesn't hit it, and take a stitch. Now I'm almost, I think I'm far enough that I can take this out. First of all, I'm going to make sure that my needle is down inside the fabric. I'm lifting my presser foot and I'm going to get this out of the way. I'll show you again in just a minute and I'll go from behind and do a complete um, sequence of going over the seams and I'll do it without any explanation. You can just watch. So I'm going to sew around and I'll meet you there. Alright, I'm about an inch and a half away from the seam and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up to where the presser foot starts to come up, come up the hill, and then I will put my little do daddy thingy in there and watch what happens. First of all, I have to take my needle out. Pin, I'm sorry, take the pin out. And coming up, it's starting to go up the hill. I'm going to use my hand, and I think it's time. I'm, okay, so the needle is down in there. I'm lifting the presser foot. I'm going to put it behind this time because as I'm coming up, the back wants to go down. The back of the presser foot wants to go down. So I'm going to put this little gadget behind the presser foot. I mean, at the back side of the presser foot behind the needle. Okay, so now I'm going to take stitches. Now, as I do this, as I get to the thickness, it wants to veer, so I have to, you know, keep pulling it back over this way. And I have to watch my stitching length. It wants to pop up. You with the modern machines probably don't have that problem. I have to lift the presser foot a little bit to, because uh, it's wanting to uh, bunch up there between the V there. Okay. So now I have to push my gadget up forward a bit more and take some stitches with my hand. I have to make sure this is staying in the right direction. It wants to pull that direction. Okay, and whoops, see my stitches want to, that stitch lever wants to go up. I can't keep it in one spot. Okay, and now I'm up on here now and I can take this out. Okay, now I'm about to go down the hill, so now it's time to put this in the front, remove my pin, lift, uh, make sure the needle is down in the fabric, lift up the presser foot, put my gadget underneath, okay, take a stitch, maybe I want to come at that from this angle. Well, uh, I'm breaking a rule. I have to be really careful so I don't move my fabric because I don't have the needle down in. Okay, forward. Take another stitch or two. I'm, I'm moving this gadget forward just a little bit 
with each stitch. Okay, probably one more stitch and then I'll be done. I won't, I won't need the gadget. Okay, so I have the needles down in the fabric. I lift the presser foot. I remove my gadget. Put the presser foot down. Make sure my stitching is correct. And go on. And that's it. That's my probably 50 cent thingamajig. Thanks.